you. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, as usual, I'm doing the routine check. Yeah, it works. Yeah. All right, great. First of all, uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining this talk. Uh, sports is a very important element, and I'm going to talk about that. Uh, the way this talk is structured before I start my talk is about uh, about cricket. I'm not sure how, how many of you know cricket uh, as, a, as a sport and how it is played. Great, thank you. So, the game is played in two innings, the first inning and second inning, and in between innings, there is a break. So, we're going to do all uh, you know, aspects of cricket. We're going to run the first inning, do uh, the, the break, and instead of match analysis, during the break, we're going to talk about the impact of climate change on cricket, various formats of cricket, and different stakeholders of cricket. So, the, instead of the match analysis, we're going to have that particular aspect covered during the, during the innings. And finally, we'll see how the chase goes, and who wins, and who loses at the end. So that's how the narrative is all about. So, before I start the commentary, and before I get into that, let me quickly introduce myself, uh, why I'm doing this talk in the first place. Um, so my name is Kishan Sangani, as you have seen, and uh, I'm deeply, you know, uh, committed and passionate towards cricket and sports specifically. Uh, being an advocate of, you know, Give, we are looking for climate action in technology, finance, and sports. And sports specifically for me is not about, you know, uh, and specifically, specifically for me, it's not about, uh, you know, a game, just a game. It's a transformative journey that shaped my life. Uh, the very essence of perseverance, teamwork, sportsmanship, and never giving up attitude is what I've learned from this very game. Cricket field, if you know how the field is all about, cricket field has been in a, is a canvas for me, for you know, self-expression for me, and always self-discovery of my strengths and you know, shortcomings. Today, you know, my passion for cricket has evolved into a sense of responsibility, not only to save the game, but also to save the very planet in which this game is played. So, I'm gonna start off with a, with a game between climate change and cricket in what I call it as Planet Cup. So climate change versus cricket, and the cup is called the Planet Cup. Imagine Earth at a big stadium where this game is going to be played. And we have every player, we have every nation, every player, every fan across the globe, all of this, all of this noble event. Now imagine one more stuff around it, cricket, which is basically has a golden opportunity to not only you know, be at the, in the center of the field, but to address climate change. The lot at stake, the battleground, is a beloved planet. The battleground is a beloved planet, and, and the game is, is about to reach its zenith. Cricket, on a, on a very good day, on a green patch, won the toss and forced climate change to bat first. However, the bowlers have performed poorly, as you can see on the scorecard. Surface temperature, 106, not out. Somebody said earlier that surface temperature increased by 1.06 degree since the pre-industrial levels. Rising sea level, 24 not out. Rising sea levels, the global mean sea level has risen by 24 centimeters since the start of the 20th century. More than any preceding century for the last 3,000 years as per the IPCC report. Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change. Oh, loss of biodiversity, 69 not out. In a game, how can three be not out? Again, you can always think about it. But loss of bio biodiversity, 69 not out. Global world wildlife populations have plummeted by 69% since the 1970s. So, as you can see, climate change is bashing cricket left, right, and center. And I'm going to discuss you know, cricket in the home ground the planet Earth. So let's see what, what you know, climate, cricket has to respond uh, after this first inning. So after the first inning, we're going to go into a break, and a break, we're going to talk about how cricket is impacted, different formats of cricket, and how different stakeholders of cricket is impacted. So let's get into a break, innings break, and it's a special edition for all of you. So please pay your attention about different formats. We start with the first format, which is being played right now and watched by a couple of billion people, the World Cup ODI format, 50 over format. Now there are a few fig figures that you see on the screen, and if you see the start of the 
first decade, 11.27% of the one-day international games were interrupted because of weather events. And that figure declined to 9.2%, oh, good for us then. But that is because the 10 most warmest year occurred in the historical record occurred since 2010 until today. So it is, hot days are good for cricket. But how much heat can cricket bear? That we're going to explore later on. The staggering 7.03% games were already impacted in the last three years. So you can imagine one day international 50 year format is significantly impacted because of the weather events. Now let's move to the shortest format of cricket, the most beloved format. T20 format, 20 over game, just done in three hours, a good competition for football which is done in one and a half hour. But let's see what happens here. 1,847 games were played in the first two decades of this century. And in the last three years, 2,153 games are played, just in the last three years. So the shorter format is on the rise, but it is not immune to climate change. The climate change impact has quadrupled by four times since the first two decades in the shortest format of the game. Now, some cricket fans, they love the real cricket. Real cricket is what we call it, the test cricket. <laughs> Got it. Test cricket. Now, test cricket is played over five days. Nearly one fourth of the test crickets is impacted because of climate change. And in the recent Ashes series, which was played in England, Many said that England lost to weather. <laughs> Base, basketball, all, all, all strategy failed and England lost to weather, that's what many said. And that is because, and they, and, they, and they were not able to claim victory against Australia, but many powerful side could not claim victory against Australia and could not regain a famous Ashes Cup or regain, or regain from them. Now, Enough of the international, let's see how the domestic cricket has been impacted. Domestic cricket, where we have the one day list A games, if you understand list A games, list A games, one day international, to minor T20 games. All these domestic games have been significantly impacted as well. The rain affected game in, the, in this last three years, if you see, it is 402 games, which is nearly, which is nearly 75% of the first decade and 50% of the last decade. So, you see the rise in the, in the number of games that is impacted at the domestic levels. And this is because there is not much facilities available in the domestic level when rain, happen, when rain, when rain comes or when, when there is extreme you know, weather events to, to, uh, to resume the game again. So they are you know, quite impacted because of that. First class game. In the last three years, 198 games have already been cancelled compared to 202 games in the last two decades. So look at the number of games that has been getting cancelled because of you know, the weather event. Now before I move on to, um, before I move on to the various formats of the game, uh, let's see how, the, how different stakeholders of the game is impacted. And these stakeholders data which I'm gonna, which I'm gonna speak about right now is all interviews that I personally conducted as part of my World Climate Athletes you know, initiative uh, with the grassroots level stakeholders of the game. So I'm going to start with you know, groundskeeper, a very important stakeholder of the game, without which there is no ground, there is no game. So let's start with groundskeeper. Ground, one of the groundskeepers, he, he said that you know, higher, you know, summer, higher summer temperatures and less rainfall fundamentally alter the playing conditions and the pitch management for a longer term. And the outfield becomes more, not, becomes a lot drier and a lot thinner that makes the playing condition unsafe and unplayable. So they, there's a lot of, and, and they are basically, they will have to bear the brand of unsafe conditions, not you know, anyone else, right? So they, there were certain challenges that they, that they shared. Empires, empires. Empiring is a demanding task, especially when you see the scorching sun and intense heat. It, it, it takes a lot of toll on your comfort and the decision making process which is a challenge magnified at the lower levels. And at grassroots levels, empires find themselves under the harsh spotlight of decision making, of incorrect decision making, if they make any incorrect decisions uh, because of these you know, extreme conditions. And they are often accused of bias. 
which nobody understands. There is no fault of theirs. They are just trying to be. They are just trying to show their physical res resilience and demonstrate and fight against the extreme weather conditions. And they end up making the wrong decision and accused of bias. It's quite unfortunate for them in that situation. In one of the interviews, again, one of the Hertfordshire League panel empire told me that the two consecutive scorching summers that we witnessed after COVID-19 pandemic. Led to the led to the older empire, led to the retirement of the older empires because they could not bear the heat, and that meant that there is a stag, there's a glaring shortages of empires or this experienced officials, which means that there's going to be an immense void which needs to be filled up urgently if you want to have club level games at the highest level. Let's move to the second, the third most important people. We would have seen these people. We would have seen this person every time at the ground if you go to the ground to watch cricket or any sports. The bartenders and refreshment vendors at the cricket ground always have always experience business fluctuations due to weather, weather intervention. In one of, in an extremely hot day, there's a demand, there's a surge in demand for cold drinks. And because of that, there will be short of supply. And in such situation, fans always demonstrate their frustrations, annoyance towards these bar stuff which is the situation beyond their control completely and we end up doing that. Players, a very famous picture, I think if clear fans know it, who, who the person is. Players always get exposed to, always gets exposed to high temperature and, and uh, uh, an extreme heat that affects their performance and, and health as well. Now, this incident, which happened in, in, again in Ashes series in 2018, uh, in Sydney, when the temperature crossed 42 degrees Celsius, Joe Root, English captain then, had to be hospitalized because of the underlying condition that got exacerbated due to extreme and severe dehydration. Female cricketer, like their male counterparts, had to go through the extreme impact of their health, uh, due to their health and their performance, because of the because of the weather event. However, female cricketers are more susceptible to excursional heat illness (EHI) than their male counterpart. Junior cricketers, junior cricketers, young expiring junior cricketers are always finding it demanding to to develop a particular skill because of the weather event that doesn't allow them to get enough practice, and their practice gets rescheduled. Disabled cricketers. Disabled cricketers always, you know, because of the weather interruption, there is, they, they may encounter challenges uh, because of the accessibility and other discomfort as well. So all stakeholders of game is impacted as well. Before I end this uh, break and get back to the chat, get back to the beginning of how cricket gonna, uh, you know, uh, come back in this very, you know, fascinating contest. It is quite evident that different formats of the game is impacted different stakeholders of the game is impacted because of this situation. So before I get back, welcome back to the chase of climate change and cricket. Cricket is there almost to get, get to, we'll see the response of cricket. The chase is on. The world is watching with made breath as to how cricket is going to respond to this particular game. Every run scored is a forest preserved. Every boundary scored is a victory against carbon emissions. Let's see what happens. As we approach to 2030, cricket has decided to set new standards of sustainability. Solar powered stadiums, rainwater, groundwater harvesting, concrete steps taken toward the carbon neutral operations. So cricket is making some really good inroads. Two billion cricket fans, behold, this alliance of two billion cricket fans, they have decided to champion to champion environmental education and climate action. And cricket is making some significant rounds. There's a twist in this game. You see cricket has decided to come back. Cricket needs 45 runs from 30 balls to win Planet Cup. Cricket fans have decided no to sports washing. They are saying that there won't be any, any hint of sports washing in cricket. Sponsorship will be taken seriously. Responsible transportation. Cricket fans are, really, are moving to carpooling public transportation. Cricket fans decided no single use of plastics. Cricket fans are taking all these sustainable practice seriously. And here we are at the stage where cricket needs 45 runs from 30 balls. 
and fans are still not out. 45 from 30 ball is the global, if we were to limit the global warming by 1.5 degree, we have to reduce our emissions by 45 percent by 2030. So let's see what happens next. Whether Brigade will be able to retain the Earth or not, I'm going to leave you on that note for all of you to see what happens seven years on the line and read whether, whether the cricket is going to regain the planet or not. For the Earth to be green, sustainable, and resilient, it, it's with all of us to ensure that together the scorecard at 2030 reads cricket won this nail binding contest and retain the planet. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.